Welcome. Today we're going to be talking about capacitors and capacitance. And so maybe you are a physics student and need to learn to solve problems with them and want to get to it. This is an efficient overview of what capacitors are about and how to go about solving problems. First of all, I want to define that capacitors are charge and energy storage devices. One of their benefits is that they can quickly release their charges and energy. So when you notice a camera flash, that is energy that's been stored from a capacitor. That charge and energy has been stored up and then released in a bright flash of energy. That is a great example of a capacitor at work. It stores energy, and then one of the benefits is that it can quickly release that energy when it's hooked up inside a circuit. Another benefit of capacitors is that they can do this without any degradation whatsoever, as opposed to a battery. A battery will tend to degrade over time. The more times you use it, the, the more it degrades. So it's often thought that in the future, if we can tap into the benefits of capacitors as well as the benefits of batteries and try to minimize the drawbacks for each, then that will help us to solve some of the more pressing problems of the world dealing with energy storage for our present and our future. So capacitors are really, really important. They're all throughout computer usage as well, computer parts use capacitors throughout and so on. So let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, so one way to think about capacitors is you can think about them as if they are two parallel metallic plates and you can actually make a capacitor just by two parallel metallic plates and then they would be connected with wires. So I've just shown the wire here and a wire over here and a wire here and over here. And these wires would go to the rest of the circuit most likely, but you can even do this with other things if you're creative about it. If you charge the capacitor over time by using the circuit or by some other means, then you can end up with a separated charge over here. So you have a net positive amount of charge on this side of this plate and a net negative charge over here on this plate. And they cannot get to each other. These positive and negative charges cannot get to each other because they have a separation right here. They're not connected. This E value right here is the electric field. So I've drawn that with four electric field lines so you get an idea of part of the electric field of this entire system. If I drew all of the lines, it would be more complex than this, but I'm just drawing electric field lines in between the two parallel plates. But this is a very useful way to think about a capacitor. So they're gonna store energy and they store separated charge. Once this charge is separated like this, you can then connect it with a switch or another part to the circuit and these electrons over here can race around and meet up with these positive charges over here if they have a pathway, if they have a circuit over here that allows for that. And then we could say as they race around, what that can do is cause something to happen. That flowing of electrons is what electricity is. We define this in this case as current. So you have current flowing through a circuit that can be used to do something useful in the circuit. All right, so let's continue with this. We're going to say there is a basic definition of capacitance, and that's the amount of the charge that can be stored on each plate, and the magnitude of this charge we're talking about. So like maybe you have, to make it easy, one coulomb, a positive one coulomb on one plate over here, like on this side, and then you would have a minus one coulomb. Well, in this equation, you would just write in one coulomb, essentially. That's what we mean by magnitude. We're going to ignore the sign convention for this. And that charge is going to be divided by this potential difference right here that you have across these two parallel metal plates. And the next thing we can say is that there is a unit for this to measure capacitance, the amount of charge that we have stored per potential difference, you could say. And so those are farads. So one farad is equivalent to one coulomb per volt. That would be a lot of capacitance. So typically we don't deal with numbers that are that high. We deal with farads in problems that are on the order of like microfarads or something like that, 10 to the negative 6 or even smaller, maybe nano 10 to the negative 9th or pico 10 to the negative 12th. In any case, that's the equation that we can use to calculate basic calculations with capacitance. And sometimes basic equations can be really helpful to understand what is happening with the concept. All right, and so if we have two parallel plates like this, and we have nothing in between the plates, like a vacuum, you could say, then there is another equation that we can learn more about this. And so if we have the area of one of the plates over here, and the distance between the plates would be this D value right here. This is called the permittivity of space or the permittivity of free space. It's kind of a weird name, 
but what it is is just a constant that's going to go in here. And so don't worry about the constant so much. I have written it out down here. What I do want to focus on is the area of the plates and the distance between the plates. So if the area of one of the plates gets larger, what happens to the capacitance? The capacitance goes up, right? And what happens if the distance between the plates goes up? What happens to the capacitance? The capacitance goes down. So the farther apart these plates are, the less ability to store energy and charge this device has. And that makes sense, right? You bring them apart, and what happens is that's harder. That attraction is less the farther apart they are between the positive charges over here and the negative charges over here. So to get a very effective capacitor, you want a lot of area, a large amount of area, and a small amount of distance in between the two parallel plates that you're dealing with. And this equation you could use to be able to calculate that. All right, and so next up we need to talk about an important concept, and those are called dielectrics. Dielectrics are materials, so this is an insulating material that you can put in between your two parallel plates, and what they do is that it changes the capacitance, and this is a little bit harder to understand why this is. I want you to think for a moment what's happening here. So a dielectric can have a positive side and negative side to the molecules here. So the positive side would be over here on this side, and the excess negative charge would go to this side over here because they would be attracted to the positive plates over here and repelled from these negative plates over here. What that is going to do is that these over here, this positive charge and this negative charge, or this positive charge and this negative charge, somewhat cancel each other out, right? They somewhat cancel each other out. Well, what does that mean? What effect does that have? Well, that effect it has is you still have a potential difference here on these two plates set up by the circuit. So you still have the same delta V value. And if that is true, then we could say the amount of charge on each of these plates is going up because we still have to have a net overall positive charge over here. Notice we now have eight positive charges here, eight negative charges here. I had four and four over here, and I've got four in here. That's because these charges cancel out. And so you still have a net plus four charge over here and a net minus four charge over here. You see what I'm doing? This is a diagram I created to help you to understand how this works. So you still have a net positive four over here, net negative four over here. And that's because of the potential difference that creates that. But what effect it has though too is now we have an increased amount of charge over here on this plate and over here on this plate. Remember we took this equation right here all we're doing is isolating for a delta V, and what does that do? Well, if this number goes up, this number stays the same, what must happen to the capacitance? The capacitance must go up as well. Because this is a ratio that is going to hold steady, it still has the same amount of potential difference here. So the follow-up question I have is, if you insert a dielectric, you can store more charge in the parallel plates with the same given potential difference, and the effect of that is it's going to increase the capacitance mathematically. In other words, if this holds the same, this number goes up, this number down here must go up as well. So dielectric material, when you put it into a capacitor, it will increase the capacitance of the capacitor and increase the amount of charge that can be stored in that capacitor as well. So what is this? Well, we're talking about air, glass, or plastic usually in the middle here. And so just a modification of a previous equation that we used right here. This is the previous information that we used. I put the new information in this box over here. If you're going to use a dielectric, that equation just gets modified with a relative primitivity over here. So just another constant that gets thrown in here to change things up. But remember, these variables hold the same. This variable holds the same. So we're just saying, well, the dielectric changes things, and we have to account for that with this equation. Okay, and if you've understood what I've been saying up to this point, it should make sense, hopefully, that we could say we've got stored potential energy in this scenario right here. Why is that? Well, if we provide a pathway for these electrons to flow around from the negative side to the positive side over here, then you will have a current. You'll have electricity flowing, and that electricity can be used to do useful work things we want to have happen. So at this point, it did take work to separate these charges and get them set up, but they are attracting each other. They just cannot pass because of this gap in the middle here. You can't have the charges meet each other. And so the charge is effectively stored. And in a way, you could say, well, that stores potential energy. And that is true. 
And so we can do a potential energy calculation with this. We could say the charge on one plate is going to be our Q value. The final potential difference between the two plates over here would be our delta V over here. And with a simple calculation, we can come up with the amount of electric potential energy that's stored in this capacitor. All right, and so let's do a quick example problem. It says a 5 microfarad capacitor is connected to a 12 volt battery. What is the magnitude of the charge in each plate of the capacitor and how much energy is stored in the capacitor? So let's get started with one of our initial equations. It's just the definition of capacitance. We can isolate for our Q value, plug in our numbers, and we end up with our answer in microcoulombs or coulombs. And if you take a look down here, the follow-up question, part B, you could say, would be the amount of potential energy that's stored in this capacitor. You go ahead and you plug in your numbers, and you end up with this example answer right here. This example problem I took from Holt Physics, by the way, which is an excellent textbook. Just a couple of other things I want to add. First of all, you may have used a capacitor today. If you typed at a keyboard, you were using a capacitor without even realizing it. So if you can understand what I've said so far, hopefully this diagram will make sense. Imagine this is the part of the key and this is another part of the base of the key. As you push a key down, that will bring two plates closer together. There's a dielectric, like a material in between these two plates. So when you push the key down, it causes these two plates to get closer together. What would that do to the capacitance of that system? Well, it would change. The capacitance would go up. So the amount of charge that could be stored there would go up. And if you had this hooked up to a circuit and you design this intelligently, you could sense that there is more charge flowing into that key circuit. And when your finger releases, then it would go back to where it was. Charge would flow out of that system. And if you designed it intelligently enough and knew what you were doing, you could use a capacitor to drive a keyboard. This is how a keyboard works. It works using these capacitors. You push a key down, it squishes plates together, changes the capacitance, the amount of charge that's stored. The computer reads that and interprets that as a key is being pushed or a key is being released. And as we continue throughout this unit, I do want to point out that we do have circuit symbols for some of these things that you're going to need to start learn. Um, this is a symbol for a capacitor if it's drawn left to right, or a capacitor if it's drawn top to bottom, you could say. This will become more familiar to you as the course goes on and as you learn about circuits. I will say that capacitors are an important part of circuits. I do want to point out, like in real life, instead of using two parallel plates, which is great for understanding what's going on, it's not that practical, we could do something like this, where you have a rolled up capacitor, and hopefully this now makes sense, where you have two plates, instead of being parallel in the sense that they are just flat planes, that's not very practical. If you were to roll them up and used a large enough dielectric to prevent the plates from ever touching each other, then you would end up with an effective capacitor. And that's exactly how capacitors are essentially made these days. You have something like this, which will allow a lot of energy storage and charge storage. So hopefully this has been helpful. We're going to continue and do more lessons that are related to this. We're going to jump most likely into currents next. I hope this makes sense. And if you have any comments, let me know. Have a great day.